So this is going to be a talk about testing, about the way I started testing and how that has evolved now. So uh, please feel free to interrupt me anytime you see I'm doing something completely stupid and that can be improved. I'm going to show some part of the GitLab CI and all those things. So first of all, my introduction, my name is Sudeep. If you are using IRC, then I'm available there. I have a couple of emails which I have listed if you want to contact me anytime. For day job, I am at CodeThink for almost nine years now. We joined as a kernel engineer, but now that has become kernel, user space, builds, and everything else. Um, before joining CodeThink, I used to be a regular contributor for the Linux kernel. And I used to see that many of my patches were getting added to the LTS tree. But at that time, the LTS kernels were not getting that much of testing. And um, that time only Shua and Gwenter used to test. So one day I decided that I'll start testing the kernel, the LTS kernel. And so I decided and tested and sent my first test report. So this was my first test report. But I missed something. Um, I missed saying that if the kernel has worked or not. And Greg replied back asking that. But anyway, that, that was nine years ago. So nowadays, when I send my report, it looks like this. So it has got lots of tests. And thanks to CodeThing, I have access to multiple runners, which can cross-compile the kernel for multiple architecture. And uh, some of those built kernels are then tested on real hardware, and also best tested on Kimu. And then the test results are sent out. Now, this particular report was for a LTS kernel test. Now, I also run the mainline test, mainline kernel uh, every night for build testing, and they are also tested on hardware. So this is one such build failure that we saw in the mainline kernel, and that was reported. So this is part of the GitLab pipeline that, where that is running as part of the LTS test. Uh, there are more jobs, but I could not fit all of them in this page, but this is just a small snippet. So the build stage over there, the arrow marked over arrow, so that is running, um, the building the kernel for multiple architectures with multiple configs and multiple compilers. So GCC 11, 12, 13, and also CLang. The report stage, that is collecting all the logs and which is giving me a summary of all the errors from the failed jobs. Now, which is easier for me to see that single page instead of going through all the logs and from all the jobs. And this, this stage, this um, next stage, this is GitLab is starting the tests on some of these kernels. Uh, this one over there, that is um, the first job that is um, putting the kernel on the MIPS CI20 board. This one is running on a Raspberry Pi. And this job is triggering a test on the Kimu. Um, so we are using Lava to boot, uh, to boot, boot the kernel on the boards. So if you don't know Lava, Lava has been developed by Linaro and is used for deploying the operating system on physical and virtual hardware. So tests can be a simple boot test or a complete system testing, including running LTP, which is Linux test project, or Stress NG. Now, we have a very simple system. And as of now, we only have three devices, one Raspberry Pi, one MIPS CI20, and one unmatched board. But last time I checked, the Lava managed by Linaro, they have almost 48 active devices. And so this is what a Lava workflow looks like. So the user will use the web interface, or optionally there is also a command line based tool. Uh, and they triggered the job based on the job definition in the Lava server. The Lava server will then connect the appropriate worker which contains the device that is mentioned in the job definition. I'll show a job definition later on. The worker can also control a PDU to power on and off the device. Now, this is a part of the Lava job that we are running, the, for running to test the kernel uh, built by the GitLab. We use the U-boot method to get to a U-boot console. 
and then ask U-Boot to load the kernel, device tree, and the module via TFTP. Now, Lava will set up a TFTP server internally just for the job and send that link to U-Boot. After it reaches the login prompt, it will use the given username and password in the job definition, and it will try to login over there. And then uh, the job definition has got some interactive test commands, which it will try to run, and uh, it will say the test has passed or not. Now, Lava is designed to use only console, so we can only test if the console, console tests are working or not. We cannot test if the graphical interface is up or not. We cannot test if the mouse is working or not. And this is where OpenQA comes in. So the architecture of OpenQA is almost same as Lava. It has a web interface to view the test results. It is also responsible for sending the job to a worker. Workers then creates a virtual machine for tests if it is a Kimu based job or if it is a hardware based job, then it tries to connect via VNC to the desktop. The tests are mostly graphical, and, but the, they are defined in Perl. So worker will then do the actual test, they collect the results and send this to the server. The job log in the server will have screenshots of each test. Internally, OpenQA will compare the screenshot to needles. Needles are something like reference screenshots defined in the test. And based on that comparison, OpenQA will decide if the test has passed or not. So this is what an OpenQA workflow looks like. User is on the web interface. The server connects to multiple workers and each worker can have multiple devices. Um, this is one of our uh, OpenQA job, which is using Kimu to uh, test the kernel. The first line is where OpenQA boots the Kimu with the default image. It will then download the new kernel from our GitLab and then install it. Since it is a snapshot based volume, so the original image for the VM is unaffected and we can reuse the uh, uh, image again for the next job. Uh, after installing the kernel, it will then reboot with the new kernel and the test will then check if we reach the login screen or not. If we can log in and reach the desktop screen, then it will test if the mouse or clicks are working or not. And it will just try to click on the menu and see if the search, it's a Ubuntu based box image, so the search, search screen will start up. So it will just try to see that. Um, it will then try to connect via the third line over there that will then try to connect via SSH and will get the D message. So now our aim is to test the kernel on a real hardware like Raspberry Pi, but just booting the kernel is not enough as we will not know if the graphical interface is working or not. So Lava can boot a device with a new kernel, but Lava cannot test graphical interface. OpenQA can test graphical interface, but cannot boot a device with a new kernel. So we have to combine both together and have a system where Lava will boot the device and then hand over the control to OpenQA. So this is what we are now doing. So GitLab builds the kernel and then a job triggers the test in Lava using Lava CLI. Lava then downloads the kernel, boots the hardware and executes a script to trigger the OpenQA test. And so we have our jobs on OpenQA, which runs every night and test Raspberry Pi 4 with the mainline kernel. Uh, this, this is one of the LTS jobs. Um, sorry, this, this, this is the list of the Raspberry Pi jobs that were run overnight. The LTS jobs are triggered only when Greg sends out the mail with RC releases. Um, this, is, this is one of the job in detail. And uh, this is a Raspberry Pi 4 job. And this is only testing if we can see the desktop and mouse event works, SSH works, it saves the D message. Um, this is only testing the kernel without changing anything in the rootFS. Uh, so I had to enable the remote desktop to, so be on, on the image beforehand so that OpenQA can communicate with VNC to the image. So, Raspberry Pi now can test the, test the kernel. So, but since 
I am a Debian developer, so I thought of testing the Debian Raspberry Pi image. And we want to test something which has not been released yet, and so Debian Unstable is the first choice. Now, if you don't know what Debian Unstable is, Debian Unstable is the development version of the Debian distribution containing the latest packages. Now, the steps that I decided to follow were just get the image, flash it, boot it, test it. Simple plan. But the Debian Raspberry Pi team, they builds and publishes daily images for Raspberry Pi, but those images are based on the next Debian release, Trixie. We don't have a release for Debian Unstable. So I looked at how the Raspberry Pi team is generating the images. And they are using a tool called VMDB2, which, which can take a YML file, and their YML file specifies what the image will have, the size of the image and all the details of the image. The spec that the Raspberry Pi team uses is in Debian GitLab, and the link is on the slide itself. So VMDB2 is using dbootstrap to create a base image and then using BN, BN, uh, BNFMT support to configure that image. It installs extra packages and creates new users while configuring it. Uh, the slide shows two build times. 40 minutes was on a x86-64 machine, which was using BNFMT support. And if I do the same on an ARM64 machine, then the image builds in nine minutes. So there's a huge difference between uh, while using BNFMT support and doing it natively on an ARM64. So now we have a Raspberry Pi 4 image based on Debian Unstable. So next step is to flash the image on a Raspberry Pi so that it can boot that image. Of course, I can just take the SD card and DD the image to it, but I need to automate the process so that it can, it can be run from the GitLab CI. And I also need to have a fallback so that I can recover the board remotely in case the image does not boot. Now, Debian Unstable is a development version where failures are expected. So there will be some, some situations where the image does not boot and the board becomes unrecoverable. So for that, I decided to use the USB boot capability of Raspberry Pi 4. So I need to flash the image to USB drive from GitLab CI, and the image in the SD card is going to work as my backup image. So, but now the problem is, how do I write the image to USB drive and connect the USB drive back to Raspberry Pi 4 um, from the GitLab CI. And this is where this USB switch comes in. So Coating was working on this USB switch for another project. And then this was made completely open source. The hardware, firmware, everything is open source. It has a control port, which registers as a TTY ACM device. Um, the USB drive then connects to the top port Raspberry Pi on one of the bottom ports and a laptop to the other port. Now switching the USB drive between the Raspberry Pi 4 and the laptop is just a matter of giving these 280 commands. Uh, the laptop that is connected to the other port also has the con control port. So the GitLab runner was installed in that laptop. So now the GitLab CI job just gives the 80 command and can control where the USB device is connected. So now we have an image. We have a way to flash the image. Uh, we, can, we have a way to connect the Raspberry Pi 4 to the laptop and the Raspberry Pi as, as required. Booting it is simple, just power it on. So next, next problem is how will OpenQA test the graphical interface? The default spec used by the Raspberry Pi team is CLI based. So I had to modify it to install the graphical, um, the graphical environment. Um, on our previous OpenQA-based um, job where I was testing the kernel, I had a chance to modify the image to, uh, to enable the remote desktop. But in this case, the Debian image will be made by GitLab CI and will be automatically flashed. So I don't get a chance to uh, configure the image to enable the desktop, a remote desktop. Um, so I need something which can interact with OpenQA and control the graphical interface. So we had a similar problem before in one of our client project where we had to test it without modifying the image. And that time QAD was started. So uh, later QAD was made open source, so we, this is also available. So this was my chance to get it, get it in my test plan. Now QAD is using a HTTP server to receive the request from the invoker. 
based on the request it either passes the request to a json parser or it if it is a screenshot request then it directly sends the request to the kms backend using libdrm and it gets a dump from the frame buffer just as a screenshot qad was then added to debian as a package and i modified the vmdb2 yml file to install qad while creating the image and also i had to modify it further to add a service file which will start qad on a particular port after boot well now that everything is in place so this is my final gitlab pipeline this job builds builds the image this job is flashing the image to the usb drive this job is triggering the test and this job is just restoring the image back to the previous default image so that the kernel test can go on as usual so this is the first job the details of the first job that is building the image a very simple job just installs everything it needs and then then it runs vmdb2 to generate the image this is the second job it takes the image from the previous job marks the raspberry pi status as maintenance mode in lava so that the other jobs are not started uh, gives the at command to the usb switch to connect the usb drive to the laptop and uh, does a dd to write the image to the usb drive and finally another at command to move the usb drive back to the raspberry pi and this is the main job which um, actually triggers the lava job for testing it is using lava cli to submit the job and then it monitors the job until the job has started running it will then trigger the open qa job after it gets the ip address now we need the ip address to tell um, open qa the uh, the address of the board where it has to connect to get the remote desktop um this job is then quite simple the same as the flashing job the switches the drive back to laptop writes back the original image and so that the other kernel test can run after that and this is what the final open qa job result looks like so now yocto so if since yocto is everyone's favorite so now that debian is done it's time to test yocto uh, for this i decided to build the image based on poki now yocto uses recipes to define what will be in the image and recipes are contained in layers so these are the layers that are needed to build a minimal uh, raspberry pi image with a xfc graphical uh, graphical interface this is an extra layer that i had to make for the image that i am building now this layer this is the first part of that layer so it i just named the image and uh, it is based on a minimal xx xfc and, uh, uh, image from from the from poki and the image also installs the qad over there qad is available in upstream upstream yocto in meta oe layer so I, i i didn't have to do any modifications over there and this is the last part of the layer that i added so this is just adding a new service file to start qad after boot and with that this is the final gitlab pipeline almost same as the debian pipeline i showed before and just uh, builds the image flashes it tests it restores back the previous image so this is the actual build job that i am running so this is um, it just adds all the layers and builds the image that i defined in my extra layer this is just adding some extra changes before it builds the image this is part of the changes that i did over there these two are the persistent folder defined in the runner so that jobs can reuse the downloaded files and the state dir um, so the next slide will show why i had to do that this enables the serial port in the raspberry pi image now lava is using the serial console for the for the interaction 
So we need to have a serial port on, on the Raspberry Pi so that uh, Lava can work with it. Uh, the default Yocto is using the SD card as its root FS, but we are using the USB drive, which is on a comp completely different uh, SD device. So the command line had to be modified so that it boots from the, right, um, from the USB drive. This is why I had to, I had to make the persistent folder for the estate there. So if I use the cache, then it is building in seven minutes. If I don't use the cache and builds everything, that is 75 minutes. And that too in a big runner, which has almost 72 CPUs. And with that, this is the final open QA job for Yocto. So it checks the desktop screen is displayed. And then it sends a mouse click to the menu over here. And the next job is checking if the, if the menu has been displayed correctly or not, or not. So since I'm doing only a boot test, so I have not added any more test, but if it needed more tests can be added over there. Now I can add multiple boards to this setup, but I think the only limitations will be that uh, I need to support the USB device, USB booting. Unless the USB booting is supported by that board I cannot use this same, this, this same method for this testing. Uh, I could not find out any other way of doing this. So, so this is the link uh, summary of all the screenshots that I have added. And with that, I think I'm at the end of my talk. So questions, if any. We used a previously we used a USB device to con to change the SD card, but that was purchased from. Do you remember which one we, we used for the? the I, I mean, may, may have been that device. Uh, the, the point actually was the USB switch being used for the other projects we're going where we don't have access to a USB. Mm -hmm. That's why SD card is more persistent only if you're talking to it. Ah, okay, yeah. But maybe for the for the for the board. I'll check that. Thanks. And my company, we, we built something similar. Um, and and it was really easy. So on, on, on some boards, we have problems with this SD card. But um, I think for the use case, it's, it's great. Because we don't need the restore job. So you, every time you start, the first thing is to set up your image. And you can always be sure that if this job was working, you have this content on your test device. Yes. That can work, yes, I, I can have a look at that, yes. And another question I was asked before I saw this other is um, why don't you try to boot, uh, to do a network boot? Or did you try this? Network boot will not test the, because I, I, I thought of doing the NFS, Lava supports the NFS booting. Mm -hmm. But then with NFS boot, it will not test the U-boot that, that is built in Debian, right? Yeah. So the U-boot will be the original one that is already in the SD card. But when I'm testing the Debian image, I also want to test all the parts of Debian image which are the Yocto image so that the U-boot is also part of that. Yeah. And that is why I had to do this way. Yeah. Um, I can show some of the pipelines if we still have time. I can, yep. So I have a comment. Uh, yep. Um, we often we are we work a lot of different uh, boards right. because we work with a lot of different clients and having multiple ways of booting different technologies is important. 
So uh, this was the start of a project where we've actually continued on and then extended it into the automated testing of the client system. So this was this is a similar technology we use for space to test client rooms and you know it's really sort of pipeline is a very useful tool to have support and have been. Some of our clients were doing manual testing where they employ twenty people to go around yeah. with USB sticks and yeah. stick them into machines. So this is the actual um, OpenQA job that is being run. Okay, it's very difficult to do it from here. Uh, this is the Lava job that, that, is, that, that is actually being triggered from the GitLab. Uh, this is the Lava job definition that is being triggered. Oh, come on. Okay, uh, so this is the OpenQA job that has been triggered over there. And it tests the desktop screen. And after the desktop screen is done, it will test over here. It will see if the menu has been there is there or not. So this is this has been this is running every day. So al almost every night, this job has been is been triggered. So the Debian job and the Yocto job both are triggered every night. This is the Lava job definition. Uh, this is the definition, right? Yeah. So this, is, this is the Lava job definition that is being triggered from the GitLab. Now this interactive job uh, over here, it is getting the IP address from the board so that it can be passed to the OpenQA. So OpenQA can get the IP address of the board and then connect to it via VNC. Yeah, I think that's it from my side. Any more questions? I think, uh, I'm not completely sure, but I have heard as part of the ELISA, Bosch was also trying to do something, uh, something similar for the safety applications that they have. testing in a box stuff um, where we're trying to make a out-of-the-box solution. So those things will are, are either open at the moment or will be open support. So okay, I guess we can end. Thank you.